continuing where I left off, my computer had shut down. I was able to say some of that, but a lot that I was still talking about. Uh, season 12, it got, you know, cut off. So we had to revamp some stuff and just talk from a different perspective. But I went on to Radar Online and they're reporting that Nene Leakes is at the center of what's proving to be a nightmare for Bravo. Nene is refusing to film with Portia and Kenya as insider divulges. The source explains her motive. She is not going to let them stir the pot. Nene is central to the show and she knows it. And she knows that her castmates, even her enemies, know it. Nene knows that they all just want to use her for fights. The insider explains. And the source continues. She wants no part of it. In other words, Nene isn't just avoiding Portia and Kenya. She is actively trying to punish them all by sabotaging their careers and causing them deep personal and professional frustration. Now, why is it so? Why, now, why is she so mad again? More, uh, Portia made claims that Nene grabbed her when she was pregnant. The insider reminds the world, okay, they hash and old stuff up with this new season coming in. The source notes that this allegedly grab or alleged grab grabbing went down during the infamous closet fight. But the unedited footage shown during the reunion vindicated Nene, the insider says, adding she believes. Suffice it to say that Nene holds a healthy grudge, okay? But technically, I understand that phase of it because if she did then she'll be looking at assault charges and all this other stuff not let alone she already don't knock the tooth out of so called allegedly not the tooth out of the cameraman's uh, mouth when he was sitting up there trying to go in her closet and film everything and some things that Nene didn't want nobody to see I think it's just she just had an unpleasant distressed looking closet meaning everything was probably you know, a hot mess back there and she didn't have time to organize. I don't think it was nothing really significant. But more so, she didn't want the world to see it for them to talk about something else, you know, negative on her house, how she keep it, this, that, and the third. Uh, but Nene wants nothing to do with Portia, the source characterizes. Their friendship has thoroughly sourced, I'm sorry, has thoroughly sour, and they have not mended fences between the scenes or behind the scenes. The same goes for Kenya, of course. According to the insider, Nene knows that Kenya is only coming back for drama. That's why That's why any housewife comes back. So, Nene, did you come back for drama when you got cut from the Glee and other um, theatrical things you were doing on Broadway and this, that, and the third that wasn't going to hold a candle? Uh, to that, were you not talking or in contacts with Bravo about coming back? Because you actually came back as a friend when Cynthia brought you back in. Uh, you know, you and Greg, per se. And then you turned on her and got your thunder back. So I'm like, come on, Nene. Come on. You don't play it your part when you don't venture out on your own thinking that uh, Bravo was going to hurt, you know, disastrously. And you were going to come back and say it today. But no, you just had a good stir line. You know how to stir the pot. And they needed you. They needed drama. And it just had your name written all over. And that's how you got solidified back at Real Housewives of Atlanta. But if it wasn't for Cynthia wanting to take with you, then, you know, to me, you wouldn't have been a part of it. Because nobody else wanted to take with you at that time. Because Kenya was definitely on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta and definitely twirling her way through like a tornado and the rest of them. But Cynthia threw you a bone. That's just from my opinion how I looked at it. And then going back to this um, article, it says that's why any housewife comes back. Uh, the network gets drama. The housewife gets fame and money. That's the deal. And the source says she is not going to entertain it. She don't want Kenya to steal her thunder. That's pretty much what I think. This entire ordeal isn't making Nene any new friends. Quite the opposite. She's making more enemies. The issue is, the insider explains, all of the other ladies feel like they had to film scenes that made them uncomfortable. Now, I'm going to say this. Yes, some stories had brought out or broke out about Portia and Dennis McKinley and him liking animals and having all these other women and uh, just a whole plethora of un uh, well, negative stuff geared towards her and probably what she's going to have to answer for. But see, again, that's what Bravo is all about. That's what the franchise is all about. Creating drama. Showing drama. 
you making money. Is it going to make you look like a nut, a crazy person and everything else? Yes, it is. But you wanted the money. So with that comes that type of format, that type of picture of your life that kind of solidifies who you are as a person. You wanted to do it. So that's what you're getting paid for. All these millions and, and thousands of dollars. That's what you signed up for. So you're doing your part. Bravo's going to do his part by paying you. And that's the gist of it, pretty much. So, shut up, cast members, and film. That's my gist of it all. Film, film, and then film some more. Uh, then it says the source added, they're mad that Nene doesn't have to film with them. Or she don't want to film at all with them. She wants to feel by herself and with her new playmate. Uh, they said this is where Nene's massive salary of $2.85 million for the season, more than that of any other housewives in the franchise history, comes into play. They think it's unfair that the highest paid person on the show wants to do the least amount of work, the insider explains. That's a fair right, though they'll find that reality te television isn't the only business sector where income is unfair. Tell it like it is. Okay? That's my pun. Then we got Nene Leaks is grabbing or gambling that her entertainment value is more important to Bravo than that of the women's she now despises. In other words, she's icing them out for more than just a desire to avoid them. She wants them off the show, and she doesn't want to clash with them in person, even if, even if it would help their careers. It sounds like Nene could be shooting herself in the foot. There's no sense in cutting off your nose to spite your, fight, your face, right? But that's pretty much what they gave us. I mean, we all know we were sick and tired of Nene's storyline with Greg and all of that. <laughs> All of that detail. And uh, we weren't really uh, not being there for her as viewers of the show, but a lot of people suffer from cancer. Men and women, hell, even animals. And it's just something you have to deal with and you have to have a great support system. Uh, with that said, that was enough. She had beat us over the head with that storyline. Okay, so now she has to find another storyline that's going to be very interesting to, or for us to gravitate to and see her as a strong player. Because Kenya is just her nemesis. She's just as good as uh, providing a plot or drama-filled storyline that, you know, can catch your attention. And you want to see it plays out. Because she's the twirling tornado, I like to call her. And with her new baby of, of, of a bundle of joy, you know she's going to be showing her more so than she probably be showing her husband, Mark Daly. But you have to have some little fluffy scenes for the camera uh, to show that they are allegedly married and having a wonderful family unit with the new addition to their family, which is the baby Brooklyn. So, I mean... Oh, I know. I, I, I really don't want to see her put Brooklyn on television that much because, you know, it's almost like pimping out your children. They didn't sign up for it. They're a part of your life, but we don't need to really see too much of her. And not necessarily see too much of um, Mar Daly either if they're not going to bring Greg, uh, Todd, Mike, you know, into some type of man bonding scenes on the show. It's it's no sense of seeing Mark all the time. You know, he okay, y'all say y'all married, okay, cool, whatever. But we want to see what you bring to the show, what you've been doing other than sitting there and pregnant with Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? And, and calling probably every other day to Bravo, wondering how you can get back on. Because I was certainly surprised they didn't bring Phaedra back. Because I was like, all right then. Because Nene wanted Phaedra back, but like I said, she must have did something pretty heinous. Other than what we saw that she did to Candy, which Candy's making money 
on the a whole play out thing. Yes, it was terrible for her to lie and be destructive towards somebody else's livelihood in life. But if you're going to take that lemon candy and make it into lemonade, you know, that's just like, you know, saying you were hurting at one time, but now you're going to laugh at it and make money with it. But it was all, when Phaedra was on the show, oh, it was all about your livelihood and this, that, and the third. And, you know, she should be in jail. And that, but you didn't take it that way, okay? But now you're making profit off of this so-called pain that you experienced. Uh, on, I think it was season 10. It got 10 or 9 it was going through. So now you done made the dungeon, the sex dungeon. That was a playoff. From Portia saying that uh, you had tried to uh, drug her, you and Todd this, that, third, and that. Now you're doing a dungeon theme type of sex capade uh, show, and you're making buku money off of it. You know, sex selling. You know, and you hyping up on that idea. But when somebody go back, oh, you want to play victim and say, oh, but this could have been detrimental to my career. Oh yeah, it could have, but it didn't work out that way. So I'm like, why not let the, the uh, Phaedra come back on the show? And y'all ain't got to be friends. We don't really want y'all to be friends. Or I don't really want you to be friends. But, you know, hey, take some more drafts. You know, I ain't saying stick, stick to stoop to her level and go all trash and stuff like that. But, you know, let's see what you got. You know, get in the ring and box it out, in a sense. But um, it's just a mess. I mean... Kenya going to definitely stir up some stuff. And I, I, I got to bet on Marlo is going to find some stuff out on Kenya or even Marcel because they got this new spin of Yovana being in there. And it's just going to play out to the fullest. And Nene just wants to sit there, hear the uh, messages or uh, things being talked about. And then she wants to put herself as the queen to go and address this person since she may feel it may be comfortable coming from someone like herself being some medium person or a minuscule person like you know, others that try to take her place as the grand dame of Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> I was like, you gotta mess yourself up, Nene, because you ain't you don't want to doubt nobody. So how's somebody gonna listen to you trying to give them advice when you won't even speak with them? You haven't spoken with them since the season ended uh, for season 11. So I don't know what clout, you know, is going to come your way that you're going to be able to salvage since you're taking a stance where you're going to come in and they got to bow down to you and we got to listen to you be the center of attention. No, I don't need you to be the center of attention this season. I want to see you come out and address what you think you feel of your claim to status and we need to recognize you know that's why I need you to do at this point but whether it be here or there it's all my opinion it's all my perception my speculations and a little bit of vlog truth from these tabloids and uh, magazines okay but thank you for coming back for part two uh, Nene don't shook the table. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Have a nice Sunday and I'll talk to you soon for something or another. I'm not sure. Okay. Bye-bye.